Greetings! Today I've got a piece of consumer gear to take apart. Well, actually I've taken it apart already to save you from showing you how to unscrew things from the casing. And yeah, let me know if you prefer it uh, this way, if it's better to watch. I guess everyone knows how to unscrew a screw. I wasn't actually going to make a video out of this. I was simply taking it apart for my own pleasure. And I was going to maybe see if there are any salvageable parts inside this. And as I kept opening it, uh, I was getting surprised by a few things that I haven't seen before. Maybe they're quite common, maybe it's just I haven't seen them, but I thought, well, it actually is uh, worth to put it into a video and maybe someone will enjoy that. So there it is. It's a Panasonic DVD recorder um, thing. Um, you can see the boards take quite a bit of space and that's where the, uh, the drive was. Um, DMR EZ27, that's what it was. And you can imagine there was just a large piece of metal all the way around this. Now, I'll first away, just to make some space, I'm going to take away a few parts that are not so strange. Um, first of all, let's take away the DVD drive. It's unusual, I was actually expecting to for a standard IDE uh, DVD drive to be there. That seems like the simplest solution, but no, they've come from, for something else, so okay, that's fine. I think uh, this will be a separate uh, video if, uh, if I take it apart as if and when and whatnot. So let's take, put that away. Here we have a few interesting and a few odd and a few over-engineered solutions. So overlooking at what you see over here, let me just move it a little bit more in frame, there you go. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boards uh, and that's, uh, that are interconnected in between. And it's really amazing how they've done it. Now, before we get into individual boards, I'd like you to take a note of a few things. So it's a Panasonic gear, so Matsushita, you know, Japan. It's supposed to be nice, and it, it kind of is really nicely made. There are, there are a few really nice details. For example, all the screw holes, I'll get a little bit closer in a moment, they've got metal tabs soldered, so you're not screwing onto the actual PCB, you are screwing onto, uh, onto a metal that's effectively like a washer, makes the material of the PCB stronger in a place of uh, where it's fastened. Uh, what else we have over here is two, or possibly three, no, two different types of PCBs. So we've got the cheapo stuff, which are those two boards, the power supply and the main board. And then we've, and those are just single layer, and those two, and this one, so those three actually, those are three separate multi-layer boards. I think they are more than just top and bottom. There must be inner layers looking at the BGAs over here. What struck me first thing when I opened is the sheer emptiness of what I was seeing on the main board. It seems like the whole thing is populated with just jumper wires and that's, it seems ridiculous. I mean, is the double-sided board that much more expensive that you know, you're going to have a machine and go that goes tick, 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 tick. It's uh, it's a little bit weird. I mean, yes, if you need to put 10 or 20 of them, okay, fair enough. And you're not gonna waste another layer of PCB for this. But this, the, there must be at least a couple of hundred of those jumper links on here. I have not seen anything like this before. It's just uh, it just seems odd. Uh, perhaps it did make a commercial sense. So. Uh, let's get a little bit closer and I'll show you a few more things. All this is populated with just jumper links, just, just metal wire basically connecting two points on the, uh, on the board and that is the strangest thing I've seen um, in, in a long time. I mean, at this number, at this level of having to, doing the jumper links, it would seem that it would make sense to put a double layered board and, a f and some vias and that's that would solve the problem of having on the, the whole net of connections but obviously it didn't. And here what you see is the weirdest board to board connector that I have seen. It's 
it's not isolated, it's literally just strips of elastic metal that have got uh, in a few sections that they've got a plastic bar across it melted onto the metal and this whole thing is flexible this type of connector I just haven't seen before anyways let's pull this off and here is the part of the connector nothing special to be honest but yeah this is a weird thing I'm sure this is copper because this is transmitting all the power so there will be a few amps going through this on various voltages and yeah it's it's just weird that this is just open like that you know this is your power so what if there was a loose screw in the box or something fell off or a bit of debris or you know and you shake the box for more well, as you would shake your DVD player but if something falls on this that will cause a short on this and surely that wouldn't be good looking at the power supply really quickly nothing special it's fairly usual apart from the connector over here uh, really nice brand uh, caps Nichicon and there is some more caps over here those are actually not Nichicons those are Elna which is also a Japanese brand uh, cap capacitor maker they've got all sorts of different variants and whatnot so Japan Japan all good We've got a switching device over here, which is R8085TP. It's fairly good isolation. A few, um, a few slots cut out for where high voltage is supposed to be appearing, and yeah, nothing special. Uh, apart from this, there's a bridge rectifier on the bottom, and apart from this little connector, the power supply is fairly standard. And here is the rest of the board and this is the moment when I thought you know what I'm going to uh, make a video out of this look at this assembly so there's this board this board they're obviously connected over here we'll have a look at that but look at this this is wobbly and there's got to be quite a few connections between this It's just not because there's just maybe two um, two spokes of, uh, of some sort and this just wobbles like that it's it wobbles with quite a few connections there's actually a row of connections over here so let's take this off and this is another connector that I haven't seen before look at the amount of connections in here there's quite a bit and this goes into this connector but the connector complies with movement it's it's designed in a way that it's got a engineered amount of movement to left and right and up and down a little bit so it will flex it will move uh, to where to where it has to go and why that that can't be cheap in terms of connectors um, there is a base of the connector I'll turn the board over in a moment that's uh, soldered in place and then the top just floats on top of it with all the pins going through to the top and that connects to this uh, this board connector here I mean why have they done this? this this doesn't necessarily have to move was it an issue with the tolerance where they were making thing and they didn't know an exact place where this connector has to go so they thought oh maybe if we put a flexible one uh, we'll have a few millimeters to to play with uh, when we're assemble assembling the board and everything will be fine I don't know that's that's just weird maybe I'm getting over excited here is another board to board interconnect and that plugs into this socket here and this little board is purely HDMI output it has got it's got a proprietary Panasonic chip on there that is doing the HDMI communication you can see the differential pair for differential pairs going into here and there is uh, those are probably audio tracks so this has got to be some sort of audio amp on here or maybe one of those chips, uh, not too sure this one here is actually a voltage regulator uh, Sharp 070XNA1 it's a voltage rig, that's pretty much very reusable um, actually if you wanted to desolder it, uh, it goes from 1.2 to I think 7 volts another interconnect over here so you've got to remember this is a consumer gear so it's got to be cheap enough on the shelf in the store so people buy it and connectors especially a fancy, fancy connectors 
are not cheap. This stuff costs quite a bit of money, possibly more than quite a lot of the chips are over here. So yeah, why are they doing it like this? I'm just saying, it's, you know, if you stack this on this, the connector wouldn't have to be there. And that would be cheaper, surely, because you're, you're one part less. But okay, maybe this is board used in something else in large quantities and whatnot. That's the connector that's, no, what is that? Aha, uh -huh, couldn't find it. Um, I just put it straight into the bin. There is another board, um, the cheap PCB. That was plugging in over here. So there was, yeah, there's another connector. And this is also a, the one of one of the flexible ones. You can see, you can. It's, the, it's got designed flex into this, and yeah, it's got the base and it's got the top then that wiggles around, and that's an interesting connector. Though this board, even though thin, relatively thin, it's um, this is more than just two layers. There is. There's at least one or two um, inner layers, but there isn't layer indicator on this. At least I can't see it immediately. We've got weird connectors galore over here. And here is yet another thing. This doesn't unplug. At least it doesn't seem like, well, maybe it does. Yes, it does. There we go. And that's another, we've got an Elpida chip. ST something and Omega ST 5118AOB that's doing some processing. Yet another of those sharp uh, sharp voltage regulators. What's interesting about them, they've got a middle pin, it's a 5 pin package, but the middle pin has been amputated at the factory and that's on all of them. Uh, it hasn't been cut off by me, It's that's just how it is. And even in the data sheet, I looked it up. It is exactly that. And yet different connectors on here. This one's nothing special. Special. It's very crude. It just plugs into this. If you're eagle-eyed, you probably would have seen by now why this has board. This board has failed. So we've got uh, quite a bit of discoloration over here. So this is a sign that uh, it was getting quite toasty in this area. And this cup has, uh, yeah, pretty much put its ghost away, let out the smoke, it's uh, it's bursted out, uh, vented out, so that cup is gone. And let's just see, that's here, so somewhere around here something was causing quite a lot of heat, so probably something else shorted out, there was a large amount of current or maybe too much voltage, a capacitor has had it. And probably that, but that's probably not the only fault. Most likely there is some something else happening. But on this side of the board, everything is uh, surface mounted. And you can see again how many solder points for the through hole. So maybe that's actually, maybe that's why they went for all the, uh, all the jumper links. Because they could just uh, do a wave solder on this and solder everything in one go rather than maybe they didn't want to go through maybe they didn't want to go through an oven to reflow everything because of the connectors because those might not withstand an oven temperature they those might actually you know cause trouble and of course the vfd display this is also fairly big and whatnot so this would need this would need to be either assembled afterwards or be assembled on assembled on a separate board or or something else but maybe that's the reason why they've done all those jumper links um, so they could put everything through a wave solder rather than rather than reflow oven interesting uh, this board over here this was this is just a power button and it was sitting like this in the case, so exactly like that, and then there is a button and lever that press the power thing. What they've done, that's actually quite clever. This board came from straight from over here, so this is actually quite common to have those little separate boards cut out from a nice rectangular piece. And so is this one that holds just the um, audio and video connectors on the front panel. Again, this came from 
exactly this piece so the whole board as one makes perfect rectangle and yeah they uh, during the assembly they just break the tabs and there you go so that also means that they can those two connectors this uh, ribbon and this ribbon they can populate those and put everything through re, re uh, no, no, not reflow wave solder then and that will get soldered so on during assembly they can just tab it off and manually put them in the right places that's gonna be it for this one i hope you enjoyed it this was just a, a video of some oddities of on this board and some unusual setups for you know a piece of standard dvd player recorded same thing no difference so yeah uh, hope you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to give me a thumbs up and yeah subscribe for more random electronics related stuff and for the time being take care